Ladies and gentlemen, Buzz Coons. Okay. I have to tell you, being up here, I'm feeling mighty nervous because I wrote this poem myself, and I'm no Robert Service. And it won't take long for you to detect I'm also no Robert Frost. And you guys may have sharp objects, and I'm worried they may get tossed. But I have a story to tell you. Oh, sorry. What's that? No more cups around. Okay. <laughs> I have a story to tell you. It's kind of a cautionary tale about misjudging the value of something that's for sale. It's based on my personal experiences and those of my better half, so I hope you'll find it useful and I trust that you won't laugh. Living here in Vermont, surrounded by all this arboreal beauty, the consumption of maple syrup seems like a patriotic duty. So my wife and I went to a sugar house to purchase a gallon or two. Our friends always say, buy local, and that's what we thought we'd do. But when I got a look at the price, I did a double take. That can't be right, that's outrageous, there must be some mistake. I, my frugal Yankee heart did flips and squirmed inside my chest. I sat down quick and fanned my face and took a little rest. 60 bucks a gallon, why that's highway robbery. I could tap some trees and boil it down and have this stuff for free. <laughs> my, my, my wife said, let's just buy it, dear, but I just could not relent. My thrifty nature took control. I would not spend a cent. I told her we'd be fools to pay for something nature provides. And the clean, fresh air and exercise would do me good. And besides, I like to be self-sufficient. I value self-reliance. And how hard could it be, I said. It isn't rocket science. <laughs> I mean, come on, between the two of us, we got two college degrees. With just a hint of sarcasm, she sweetly said, that's nice but I don't see how it's gonna help you that I went to college twice. <laughs> well, that was it. The die was cast. The gauntlet had been thrown. We couldn't buy the syrup now. I had to make my own. I'd show her I was smart enough with my own brand of knowledge. I'd prove that I could do just fine without no stinking college. <laughs> so I went right down to the hardware store to get the needed supplies. When I told the clerk what I had in mind, he got dollar signs in his eyes. <laughs> I said, I'll need some taps, which brought a condescending smile. He said, unless you're planning to thread the holes, what you want is called a spile. <laughs> well, with $15 worth of spiles and my slightly wounded pride, I sheepishly made my way to the door and hastily stepped outside. When I got home, my spirit soared, my quest was underway, and tomorrow's weather promised to make for a perfect sugaring day. I headed out back into the woods to look for some suitable trees. I, enjoying the nice mid-afternoon sun and the brisk northwesterly breeze, I found some trees and drilled some holes a couple of inches deep. I put in the spiles and then I stopped short and I almost began to weep. In the haste of my embarrassment and the haste to be expedient, at the hardware store, I had forgotten one sort of key ingredient. <laughs> I had six trees, I had six spiles, but each spile would need a bucket. I struggled to make six milk jugs work, but finally I just said, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> back, back I went to the hardware store, eating humble pie. I'll need six buckets, I said to the clerk, not looking him in the eye. Sure thing, he said, and they're on sale, just $20 a pop. <laughs> of course, that's just the bucket, it doesn't include the top. I stifled a gasp, I swallowed my pride, it was more than I meant to spend, but I figured that buying the right stuff up front would be cheaper in the end. And really, $150 seemed a small enough sacrifice. <laughs> for authentic galvanized buckets, which really do look nice. <laughs> well, I hurried home and hung them up, excited as a child. The, to freeze tonight and tomorrow's sun should make the sap run wild. I tossed and turned the night away. I hardly slept a wink. I'll have maple syrup tomorrow, was all that I could think. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I got home from work next day and checked, the buckets were dry. With the weather being so ideal, I couldn't fathom why. After a couple hours of reading and several Google searches, I came to the conclusion the trees I had tapped were birches. <laughs> well, 
This minor setback phased me not. I carried on undaunted. I had to go farther in the woods, but I found the trees I wanted. I drilled the holes, and if I had a lingering shred of doubt, it was washed away in an instant when I saw the sap drip out. Well, next day I gathered up the sap in an old five-gallon pail and lugged it home through the snowdrifts on my now familiar trail. My wife said, I know you're having fun and I don't want to spoil it, but now you've gotten all that sap. How exactly will you boil it? I've got it all worked out, I said. See, this is what I'm planning. I'll do it on the kitchen stove in that big pot you use for canning. <laughs> she sputtered about the steam in the house, but I brushed her worries off. I said, the warm, moist air will probably help with Junior's cough. <laughs> Don't sweat your pretty head, I said. I've got it all under control. So she went off to bed just as the boil began to roll. Well, it took a little longer than I ever thought it would, but ar around about two in the morning, it was looking pretty good. I poured it off into a jar and set the pot back down. I held the jar up to the light to admire the amber brown. I closed my eyes and was taking a sip of that ambrosia nectar when my reverie was cut off short by the shriek of the smoke detector. <laughs> my eyes began to water and I soon began to choke. I looked around and sure enough, the pot was belching smoke. Curses, I thought, what idiot went and left the burner on. I grabbed the pot and ran outside and threw it on the lawn. <laughs> the air in the house was smoky now, but also moist and warm. I <laughs> crawled in bed beside my wife and nudged her sleeping form. She said, God, it's three in the morning. Why'd you wake me up? I said, I couldn't wait to tell you, dear. I made almost a cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was sleeping hard next morning when my wife got up for work, but her sudden cry of anger made me sit up with a jerk. What's well, got her undies in a bunch, I thought impatiently <laughs> as I wiped the sleep out of my eyes and went downstairs to see. Well, the drywall on the ceiling <laughs> was so dangerously moist that the screws had all made rust stains and it sagged between each joist. <laughs> and the other minor consequence of my maple syrup caper? Four walls of slimy dripping glue where there used to be wallpaper. <laughs> Well, my wife's a pretty patient gal who loves me dear and true. But I couldn't boil in the kitchen again, at least that much I knew. <laughs> and I figured, under the circumstances, patient gal or not, this might not be the ideal time to tell her about the pot. <laughs> where to boil was a quandary, but there's a way where there's a will. A couple days later, it came to me. I could use the barbecue grill. <laughs> that left just one small problem, which I was loath to attack. The precious canning vessel with its bottom burned so black. <laughs> well, I scrubbed that pot for hours. I scrubbed till my fingers bled. With the kids in the crowd, I won't repeat the bulk of the words I said. <laughs> but finally, I had to admit defeat. I just couldn't scrub anymore. So I got another for $49.50 at my favorite <laughs> hardware store. Well, the grill was a brilliant idea. It was really boiling well. And I had only maybe six hours to go as the evening darkness fell. I thought I'd get myself comfortable, so I pulled up a patio chair. But I guess I got a little too comfortable because I fell asleep right there. I awoke with a start. I looked around. I knew there was something wrong. The sap was no longer boiling, and the propane odor was strong. I deduced from the smell of burnt sugar and the sticky residue that the sap had boiled over and had doused the barbecue. The knobs were both still set to high. I could hear the propane hissing. And yeah, I know what you're supposed to do when your propane flame goes missing. In hindsight, it's not hard to see. I could have been some brighter. But without really thinking, I went and pushed the barbecue igniter. <laughs> well, the force of that explosion threw me halfway across the yard. <laughs> and since that day, my wife will say, my hearing has been hard. <laughs> but she was pretty sweet to me, though, and quick to offer support. 
Just think, she said, if you hadn't blown it up, you would have had a quart. <laughs> well, I was, I was late to work next morning, groggy and stumble down tired. I cut 20 rafters a foot too short, and my boss said, that's it, you're fired. <laughs> I picked up my tools and headed home, dejected and feeling like crap. But then I realized I'd have more time to collect and boil my sap. <laughs> And my wife seemed to take it pretty well when she heard I'd lost my job, though she did begin referring to me as a no good worthless slob. But she said my projects brought a, her life a different kind of wealth. And besides, she said, remember my vows in stupidity and in health? <laughs> well, the next few days I stored the sap. I couldn't boil it yet. I scoured Craigslist every day for a wood stove I could get. And soon enough, I found one, a Vermont casting stove. And I talked the guy down to just 400 bucks, and away with it I drove. <laughs> well, I set the thing up in the driveway with the firewood pile nearby and the garage right there, so if it rained, I'd be able to stay dry. I was happy as a pig in mud. My setup looked just great. Tomorrow, I'd really boil some sap. Man, I could hardly wait. Now, my wife took a, an extra shift that next day because we had some bills to pay. And as she left, she said, there's laundry to do and feed the kids dinner today. But I was on a mission. I had 20 gallons to boil. If I, even if I started to fire at noon, I'd be burning the midnight oil. So I never stopped to make dinner and the laundry didn't get done. And the <coughs> burn, stoking the stove for 12 hours straight turned out wasn't that much fun. The kids put themselves to bed hungry. My wife was a tad out of sorts. But, and I burned a half a quart of wood, but by God, I made two quarts. <laughs> I had risen to the challenge, surmounted each defeat, and surely the taste of victory had never been as sweet. I went to bed so happy, I'd never felt so alive, and I slept so hard, I never heard the fire trucks arrive. <laughs> well, the fire investigator said there wasn't certain proof, but he guessed a spark had landed on the cedar shingle roof of the two-car garage that held our cars and all my carpentry tools. And he looked at me and shook his head like I was the king of fools. I surveyed the awful wreckage of my former happy life, my <laughs> hearing, my job, my two-car garage, a, a wee bit of marital strife. <laughs> and I went back to that sugar house where the prices were so steep, and I asked them point blank, how on earth can you sell that stuff so cheap? <laughs>